because you are so worthy, God. We honor you today, God, because you've been so great to us, God. We honor you today, God, because you allowed us to see another day, God. So we come to give you glory in it today. Come on, somebody clap your hands today. We come to give you glory today, God, because you are worthy, God. You have kept us, God. You have watched over us even as we slept. You have watched over our children, God, when they were out of our sight, God. You have watched over. You've been good to us, God. The enemy has been on our trail, God, but we have kept faith in you, God, and you would not allow those things that the enemy had planned for me this week to come upon me like a flood. I thank you, oh God. God, that you block everything that the enemy tried to do, God. Oh, some things may have slipped through some little thing, but we even knowing that that all things work together for our good. You did not allow, you did not allow it to get through to hurt us, but you allowed it to get through to make us better. So we come to praise you today. We come to give you glory today. We come to give you honor today, God. We come to worship you. We come to give you and soar you to a exalt you, to esteem you, God, because you are worthy of our glory. Y'all don't act like you're worthy. Y'all spectate. Now, said, we worthy of the glory today, God. If we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't praise you enough. So, God, with the one tongue I got right now, I'm going to open my mouth and give you everything I got. Come on. Open your mouth and give him glory in this place. I said, give him glory in this place. Open your mouth and give him glory. Tell him I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Amen. Come on, hallelujah. Give the Lord some glory right there. Come on, if you're happy to be alive, let me hear some noise in this place. Listen, it said, let the redeemed say so. You ought to have a praise and a worship on your lips today. Listen, I don't care what you're going through. We came to give God the glory. We came to give God the praise. We came to give God the honor simply because he is God. Come on, just lift your hands right there and give God worship. Hey, God. The altar is open for anybody that want to bring your worship to the altar. We invite you to come to the altar. And I invite you to come to the altar because it's not church as usual today. But if you really need something for God, you need to tap into his presence. You need to tap into his presence right now and just begin to tell him thank you. Come on, tell him thank you. Come on, fill this room up with worship, here, God. Come on, fill this room up with worship, man. Come on, fill this room up with worship, man. Hallelujah. The king is exalted, and I will praise him, say he is exalted.
truth is that we ought to enter into his gates for thanksgiving. And we ought to enter into his courts for praise. Where are the praises that are today? Where are the worshipers that are today? Lift your hands in the sanctuary. 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 Shout to God with the voice of triumph. 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 Tell him I love you with the love of Jesus. Come on, hug five people. Tell him I love you with the love of Jesus. the 6 a.m. prayer. Let me tell you something. For those of you who missed it, it was absolutely amazing.com. 
Yes. It was powerful. It was anointed. God moved in this place. We prayed about. I, when I do 6 a.m. prayer, I always pray to God and ask me, ask him for things that I should pray about. And and so yesterday, he gave me a couple of things. The first thing that we prayed about was the spirit of abandonment. Amen. Uh, about having the spirit of aban being aban abandoned by some loved one, somebody who should have had your back and they abandoned you, maybe in a relationship, uh, maybe if a mother or father who you felt that wasn't there for you and you just never got over. So we dealt with that. And we also prayed to God that he would eradicate cancer. Amen. I don't hear nobody in here. And in and, and the Bible, and I had to give a scriptural basis, the Bible said the greater works with that we will do. Amen. We'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Amen. We got the power and authority to do it. We just got to take charge of it. Amen. And so we prayed, we prayed about um, eradicating cancer on Saturday. I mean, it was a powerful, it was just amazing. So um, I want you all not to please take this prayer meeting. I, it's prayer meeting to me. Um, prayer meeting for granted third Saturday of each each month at six o'clock we only here for an hour and we use that as a scriptural basis the scriptural basis is for that is when Jesus went to the garden of Gethsemane and he took his disciples with him and said hey just hang out for a minute came every time he went off to pray came back they were asleep and he said you can't watch with me for an hour amen and so so that's the scripture so anyway it was powerful am I right y'all oh my god it was, it was amazing so we coming back up here on the third Sunday of next month. Um, don't forget this this Wednesday. This Wednesday we won't have Bible study. Um, this Wednesday we're going to higher heights. Pastor is preaching. A choir will be singing. I want all of us to go. Amen. And I want to thank those of you who went with us even on last Sunday, even on last Sunday, um, over to Pastor Frazier's church. Thank you all for that. So we kind of doing a lot this month. All right, touch your neighbor. Say, hang in there, hang in there. I'm trying to get us back to church and fellowshipping and all that, so we're doing quite a bit. And then the following Sunday, which is the 23rd, our new singles ministry, headed by Minister Riley, either Red or Riley, they're going to be having their first service here at 4 o'clock at our church. Um, our guest is going to be Mission of Jesus Christ, Pastor Willie Johnson. His church is going to be here, so I'm asking all of us to come on out and let's support this. Amen? Amen. 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 We, we are Christians, so church is what we do. Amen. So, so please, please, let's be a part of that. And then on the fifth Sunday, we, got, we have a commercial I want to show real quick. Amen. As it relates to the fifth Sunday. What's up, GW? This is Pastor C. Um, I am really excited about something that God has placed on my heart for us at the church to be involved in on this fourth Sunday of March, March the 30th, during our 11 a.m. worship service. It had been designated to be our fishing day. What's a fishing day? For those of you who may not know, fishing comes from the Bible story when Jesus was going around picking the 12, his 12 disciples, and he said to all of them follow me and I'll make you fisher of men. And so God had given me that um, language to call this fourth Sunday of March our fishing service. And so that is the day that I want you to actually go after someone and invite them to church. Pull them to church, bring them to church, grab a wagon, a bicycle, whatever you need to do to get them here on that this fourth Sunday of March. It's going to be a great day for us. And I want you to really go after the hearts of people because men, men needs Jesus and they don't even know it. Our, our young brother here, Jalen, who has become a member of our church, how long have you been here? A year? Yeah. He's been here about a year and he's already fishing now. Um, in fact, last Sunday he invited two people to church, a young lady and a young man, and one of them are being baptized Sunday, right? Yes. Be because he invited somebody to church. What made you invite people to church? What makes you do that? Trying to make a change, you know, you can't be in the streets forever. Sometimes you ain't get on the sidewalk, walk the straight path. Yeah, listen to you, boy. You a preacher. I, I feel that. I 
Fourth Sunday of March, that's what we're doing. Also, listen, I want it to be such a special Sunday for you all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on, come on. 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 Come on, come on, come on.
want you to come down and stand for them. Thank you. 
reason for being here. Come on, look at them and tell them, say, I got a reason for being here today. I, my life matters. Look at them and say, my life matters. Come on, tell them, say, my life matters. I, I want you to look at somebody you didn't come to church with and say, my life matters. Yeah, yeah, it matters. Come on, mom, it matters. Yeah, it matters.
things. We survive misunderstandings. We survive haters. We survive our enemies. We survive the enemy. Open your mouth and say, I am a survivor. Can you give him worship right here? I need worship right there. I said worship, 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 worship. Worship. Come on, open your mouth. You ain't got to come with your audio. When you worship, you said, I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You just talking well to Jesus. That's all. Just say, I love you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Come on, worship him. Worship him. Come on, worship him. Come on, worship him. Worship him. I need to hear your fruits of your lips. Don't be quiet. Worship him. I came here to worship. I came here to give him glory. I came here to exalt him. Give him glory, y'all. Listen, if you all survive, I just give him a wave offering in the building. If you survive anything that should have killed you. Uh, yes. Yes. I'm a survivor. Can you find another survivor and put your arm around him and say, we're survivors. We're survivors. Come on, we're survivors. Sit down too quick. Survivor, survivor. Survivor. Right now. I want y'all to say this, say this, 
morning for Sister Benita Young's mother passed. She passed on this past Monday, I believe it was. And um, she's being funeralized next Thursday, next Thursday at 11 o'clock um, at New Mount Mariah and Gary, Pastor Reed. Um, so we want to certainly keep Pastor Deacon Chris and um, Sister Benita and that family in our prayers, all right? All right. Grab the hand of the person that's around you today. God is, God is doing something amazing in this season, this time of your life. I said God is doing something amazing in this season and in this time of your life. You, you may not, you may not feel that amazing things are happening, but I want you to know, God told me to tell you that I am perfecting some things in you. And this season of your life that you're going through is an amazing time. God says that this is a time that you should rejoice like you've never rejoiced. This is a time that you should pray and praise like you've never done it before. Because I'm perfecting some things in your life. You say, well, well then I don't see it, but don't worry about seeing it. Just trust God. Because all things work together for his good. Are y'all with me? Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for the word today. This word is for me, God. This word is for every ear that will hear it today, God. And then, God, we ask that the Spirit of God would implant it and make it take root in their lives, God, that they may apply it and be even better. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, loose those hands and give God some praise right there. I want you to turn with me to Deuteronomy, 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 the fifth book of the Old Testament. First five books, uh, this last book, the part of the Pentateuch. Oh, Deuteronomy, amen. Chapter 34, chapter 34 um, of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy, verse 1. I've been in this mountain series uh, for the last month, and uh, we've been dealing with having these mountaintop experiences. And so what God has been doing, God has been giving me different mountains that were in the Bible and to deal with some of the occurrences that happened on top of these mountains and, and to speak life to us. It's a message for us um, to understand that yes, we all want mountaintop experiences, but um, they're the price to pay to get to the top. Amen. And so you just have to be, um, you have to be available for the process. This is what we find today. Deuteronomy chapter 34 verse 1. It says, Then Moses climbed Mount Nebo from the plains of Moab to the top of, of uh, Pisgah, across from Jericho. There the Lord showed him the whole land from Gilead to Dad. Mm -hmm. Then down to verse 4, it says, Then the Lord said to him, This is the promised this is the land I promise on the oath of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob when I said that I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you will not, you will not cross over into it. Mm -hmm. Then verse 5 says, And Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in Moab, as the Lord had said. Mm -hmm. Then verse 7 says, Moses was a hundred and twenty years old when he died, yet his eyes were not weak, nor his strength gone. Amen. Amen. I want to talk about today, I want to talk about today, this mountaintop experience, the mountaintop of experience, the mountain of vision, the mountain of vision. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, your mountain of vision. Oh, or how far will you go? Yeah, how 
far will you go? You may be seated. You may be seated. Your mountain of vision. Your mountain of vision. Your mountain of vision. I am convinced, my dears, that the most needed or most important sense that the body has or uses, arguably, is your sight or your vision. Now, you may disagree with me this morning as to say that you, you may believe that the ears are the most important thing as it relates to your senses. I mean, I mean, how, what type of life would we have if we couldn't hear the beautiful sounds of our loved one's voice? What, what type of sound or life would we have if we could not hear the melodic melodies from Luther Vandross? I'm telling you, I would understand your argument. Life would seem to be dull, but I would say, even if I didn't have ears to hear, I would still have eyes to be able to see what you're saying. Amen, somebody. Well, then both of us may say, well, listen, I, I, think, I think that the mouth is the most important thing as it relates to our body. I mean, how could you communicate if there was nothing out of it coming out? How, how could we speak to one another? How could we say that we love one another if there was no inaudible coming out of our mouth. Well, I would say to you, just because I cannot hear what you're saying or see it with my, with my, when you speak it, uh, I still believe that our sight is the most important thing that we have because uh, all of our lives and all of our senses uh, are really built around what we see. It's built around what we see. We are a people of sight. Can I preach today? We, we, we are about looking the part. We are about how it looks, how everything's got to look just right. Every hair got to be in place. The clothes got to be straight. If it don't look right on us, I ain't got no help in here. Then we can't mess with it. I wonder even sometimes if people are able to see the right thing because I see people in mirrors with things on that I really, and then there's another saying that said beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I hear you, Holy Ghost. But, but our vision is the most important thing. Our eyes are the most important thing that I believe we have. Do I got any witnesses right here? Webster describes vision as the ability to see. But God describes vision as seeing without eyes. Yes. Let me give it to you again. God describes having vision as seeing without eyes. In other words, you're saying, well, God, how can I see without eyes? Well, God has placed in us the ability to, to reckon with it, to see it with our vision, with our mindset. Because if you are able to see it in your mindset, your mind will go far beyond what your eyes are able to do. Preach, Howard. I said your minds are able to go well, well beyond the, the capability of your vision. If I can just see it in my mind, then God said that you can have it. Yes. He said that's vision without sight. Vision without having eyes. And can I tell you, brothers and sisters, if you get to a part, to a place in your life that your life or your 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 your, your capabilities or your expectation goes beyond what your vision is, then you can start being all that God wants you to be. Because the fact of the matter is, brothers and sisters, that the enemy wants to cloud your vision. He wants you to, he wants to limit your capacity to see only beyond or as far as your world will allow it. But can I tell you something, my dears? I serve a God who's able to give me vision without even having eyes. I serve a God who's able to allow me to see things beyond the capabilities of my sight. I serve a God who lets me know that if you can just think a thing, yes, it shall be established. If you can just think it in your mind, that's why I come to tell you this morning that you ought not get caught up about what you see right now. Yes, you're in a one-room house. Yes, you don't have what you want to have. 
Yes, when you look at your bank account, it ain't what you want. Yes, when you get your check every month, it's not enough. But can I tell you, you better start looking at it how God looks at it. Because God said, listen, I don't deal with the here and now. I am a God that's able to, to turn 1,200 into 12,000. You ought to start looking at your next paycheck note and just add a couple more zeros. I ain't got no help in here. And then you got to throw faith behind it and say that I know my God is able. I wish I had some help in here. I know my God is able to do exceeding abundantly. You wouldn't have got to give you a bad report and you look at the x-ray and you see that blockage there or you see that mass there and you say the devil is a lie. I see a clear log. I see a clear prostate. I ain't got no help in here. There is no lump on my breath. No. I see clear x-rays. Is there anybody in the building that don't mean, don't mind getting excited right now about what you're going to see in your mind? I dare you to open your mouth and say, it gets better, it gets better. It gets better. It gets better. Stop looking at what's around you. Stop being suckered in to believing that this is all there is for you. Stop this. Stop making people, yeah, thank you, Reverend. There is no limit to what God, the old folks say, ain't no secret to what my God can do. What he's done for others, oh yeah, what he did for Bill Gates, oh yeah, he'll do it for me. I ain't got no help in here. What he did for my mother, mother, he'll do it for me. Listen, listen, God has no respect of person. Is there anybody in here that know God can bless you? Even when it don't look like you ought to be blessed. Is there anybody in here know that God can make ways? Even when it don't look like no way can be made. Is there anybody in here know that God is able? I dare you to touch somebody and say, God is able. Let me, let me, let me move before I get stuck here. He's able. Hey. Yeah, he's able. Let me move. Stop, Marlon. So, 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 so you can't get stuck with where you are. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, please don't get stuck here. Don't, don't, don't get stuck here. Listen, listen, there, there, there. I remember, I remember when I was going, I was 16, never shall forget. I was 16 on my way to Mississippi with my mother. And we riding, my mother leading a convoy of our family, about 10 cars behind us. We riding, we hit, we get on the Natchez Trace, somewhere down there, we, the rain started falling hard. I mean, it started coming down hard. I mean, cats and dogs couldn't see nothing. I mean, it was crazy. So my mother pulled over on the underpass pulled over and my uncle and everybody kept going they kept going we had CD, CBs in the car kept going my uncle got on the line I, they was using my handle my handle was the ice man y'all ain't got nothing to say here and, and so, so so we talked he said ice man he said where you at I said we stopped we stopped under the underpad he said come tell tell Bertha to keep on going they call the BC tell BC to keep on going and she keep coming there, there's no rain down here and, and I said hey what, what, what you mean I said it's cats and Oh, you weren't that uh, far ahead of her. He said, if you just come on around the corner, see, you are limiting yourself to what you can see. He said, if you just come on around the corner, it's smooth sailing around here. And, and sure enough, we got started. And only about a mile down the road, it was like the, somebody turned the water off and turned on the sunshine. I mean, it was like we crossed one line into blessings uh, out of curses. I ain't got no help in here. It was like we came out of a storm uh, right into the marvelous light. So I'm going to tell somebody in the building tonight, see you keep pulling over too soon based on what you in right now. But God told me to tell you in here, just keep on going. Oh God, around the corner. Hey God, I tell you to touch your neighbor and say keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going. 
keep going, keep going. Let's keep going, keep going. Let's keep going. You put on too soon. Yeah, you you quit too soon. You give up too soon. Just keep going. I'll get you to push somebody in the back. Just say, keep going, keep going. Yeah, keep going. So, 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 so we base it on what we see, rather. And, and so oftentimes we get hung up. We get jacked up. Put my scriptures back. We get jacked up. We get hung up based on what we see here this morning, brothers and sisters. We are in. We are in. We are in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. That book means it's the fifth book of the Pentateuch. The first five books of the Bible are called the Pentateuch. Deuteronomy means reviewing everything that God has already said. Started with Genesis. Genesis is the gene. That's the first book of the Bible. Second, Exodus. Exodus is the coming out book. That's when they came out of Egypt. Then, then the third book is Leviticus. That's the blood book, the blood sacrifices. Then the fourth book is what? Numbers. That's the census. That's the counting of Israel. And then Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy which is the fifth book, it means the Pentateuch. It means reviewing everything that God had already said. And so in this book, Moses stands up, and Moses is the writer of the first five books of the Bible. And in this book, Moses seems to tie the string or puts a period over a long life of service. And here you will find in Deuteronomy chapter 34, Moses is being addressed or is have addressed the people of God. In chapter 33, he had addressed the people of God by addressing the twelve tribes of God. And then in chapter 32, you will find when Moses really was letting the folk have it because of all of the crazy stuff Israel began to do when he went up to get the Ten Commandments. They began to worship idols. And then chapter 34 is when Moses is about to go out to sea. Now, what's amazing to me, brothers and sisters, is that God gives him a mountain, Mount Pisgah. Mount Pisgah was the mountain. That means, that word Pisgah means the mountain of vision, yes. And, and just from that word, God gave me the word today. How God is going to bless you even on your mountaintop. But what God is trying to show us on this Mount Pisgah of your life is that God is trying to get you above where you are so you can really take a good survey of where you are. I ain't got no help in here. See, sometimes you gotta get above where you are so you can take account and reevaluate where you are. Just preach out. See, sometimes God allow your stuff to put you into a place and to push you into a corner to such a degree you say, hold up. Wait a minute. Why am I here? How do I, do I got anybody on my street today? How did I get here? It gets you to a place to where it causes you to recognize where you are. And so oftentimes when we get on your mouth or on this mount of vision, it can become a time that you really begin to down yourself. But God told me to tell you to don't down yourself, even as you stand on top of all of your stuff. Because God said, listen, I'm giving you a second chance, or maybe it's a third chance for some of us, or maybe it's a fourth or fifth chance for some of us, or maybe it's that 70 times, 70 times, 70 chance for some of us. God said, I'm giving you a chance to reevaluate yourself again because he said listen I got some blessings to give you preach out in this season that you got to be aware and know where you are I ain't got no help in here uh, look at your neighbor and say neighbor wake up in this season See, this is not the season for you to sleep no this is not the season for you not to come to Bible study or Sunday school no this is not the season for you to hold on to your praise no no, this is not the season for you to worry about people around you and that you're yelling too loud in their ear. No, God said this is the season that I'm trying to get you to see where you are. And, and based on when you see where you are, you should be able to act accordingly. Because anybody that has the Spirit of God in them, it's no way you can be satisfied with being where you are. I ain't got no help in here. If you think you've done enough for God, can I tell you, you ain't saved no more. If you think that God has all that he's going to get from you, can I tell you, you ain't 
saved no more. Because the Bible lets us know that the same people of God hear his voice. And they are always called to service. And they are always called to getting better. They're never satisfied with where they are. In fact, the Bible said that every round gets higher and higher. Yes. So look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, we still got fur to go. We still go here and hear more of this. Hear more of this. Hear more of this. It's on his way up. He's on his way to die. And God had declared to Moses, he said, look, Moses, he said, I'm going to let you see what I promised you, but you're not going to be able to go over into it. And see, you got to understand what happened with Moses. Yes. Do you know that God did not allow Moses to go over into the promised land? Moses, yes. The Ten Commandments, Moses, yes. The man who parted the Red Sea, yes, that Moses. The man who who, who placed the 12th plague of Pharaoh, that Moses. Oh yeah, that Moses. God did not allow him to go over into the promised land. He said, look Moses, I'm just going to let you peep it out. But because of some wrong that you've done, I'm not going to let you go over. Well, what wrong was so wrong that it wronged Moses that he couldn't get over to make it right? Well, what Moses did was when he was leading the children through, through, the, through the valley, or through the devil after delivering them from Pharaoh, the children of God began to complain. They began to murmur. They began to get so upset always on Moses' back. Every time Moses did something they didn't like, oh God. Every time Moses made a decision, they wanted to have a meeting. I ain't got no help in here. Every time Moses was hearing from God, the people never accepted. And the Bible said that they complained and murmured. And on one instance, when they complained and murmured, they were complaining about food. And God told them, he said, look, Moses, just, just, just tap the rock and we'll make food water flow for her. And Moses got so upset, Taylor, because the people were complaining, where's my food? It's too hot. It's too cold. It ain't enough. I don't want this today, but I wanted that right there. Well, why did you cook it anyway? How come you didn't ask me about it? They just, I ain't got no help in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They begin to get on his nerve to such a degree that instead of Moses tapping the rock, the Bible said he slayed the rock. He broke the rock. So thereby, he disordered or he disobeyed an order from God while leading the children. And so now, as God said, listen, Moses, because of your wrongdoing, do you let me help us today? How many of us do you think that are in the building beside myself? We have suffered or have not been able to get the blessings of God because of some of the wrong that we've done. Bible says, yeah, it says, come on, y'all, y'all can admit that, yeah, yeah, come on, come on, tell the truth, shame the devil, that's a grandma Bible, yes, yes, shame the devil, all of us uh, right now have suffered uh, because of some wrongdoing that we've done, uh, and, and we were able to see the promise, uh, but because of our filthy and raggedy self, uh, well, let me speak about me, I know y'all ain't like that, uh, but because of my filthy and raggedy self, uh, I was not able to get what God had for me, uh, but can I tell you? my brothers and sisters, I found out uh, that if God didn't give it to me one way, uh, in that season, I ain't got no help in here. Uh, God will give it to you when you need it most. I ain't got nobody. Uh, is there anybody in here that knows you didn't get it then, uh, but you got it right in time? I ain't got no help in this house. Uh, Y'all sitting here looking too cute for me. I want to know if I got one or two folk in here that know that you may not. Oh, here we go. Uh, the old Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes. 
Moses goes up on the mountain. God allows him to see. God allows him to see it. He allows him to see it. He said, look, Moses, I'm going to allow y'all to sit down. You're making me nervous. He said, Moses, I'm going to allow you to see it. But you cannot go over into the promised land. He said, I'm going to give that to your descendants. They're going to cross over. But you won't be able to cross over. Oh, brothers and sisters, can I tell you something? When you get up on this mountain of vision, when you get up on this place where God is trying to show you, can I tell you, my dear, sometimes, even even though he may allow you to see the vision, it may not be for you to partake in the vision. It may, I ain't got no help in here. Maybe God gives you things. Yes, thank you, Holy Ghost. In order for you to tighten up the bolts and screws, maybe God gives you things in order for you to open up the doors. Maybe God gives you things in order for you to prepare the way of somebody that's coming behind you. And so even though you may not get it, you better walk it like it's your anyway. Because you know, I ain't got no help in here. Because if God placed it in your hand to do it, even though you may not see the benefits of it, your name is still going to be on it. I ain't got no help in here. Because far after you go, they're going to see your signature. Reggie Dotson. I ain't going to read a while. Yes. Oh yeah. They're going to see your scripture, Brother Chip. They're going to see your scripture. And far after you go, your reputation got to still show excellence even when you don't exist. Preach out with her. Oh, you it now. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, your reputation has to say excellence even when you don't exist. I ain't got no help in this house. Is there anybody in here that God ever gave you something? Maybe you didn't get to say thank you to him. Maybe you didn't get to say but you look back on it now and you see other people being blessed. I ain't got no help in this house. And you got other people being blessed by it. Oh, can I talk to some mother? I ain't got no help in here. That job you got is for your baby to be blessed. That job you got is for your household to be blessed. I dare somebody who's excited about what God gave you to open up your mouth and say, I I'm glad. Oh, to Moses, he goes. He goes on the mountain. He gets to look over. He gets to see it. He gets to see it. He gets to see it. Now, 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 can I tell you? I feel good, brother. I feel like preaching about an hour longer. Because they ain't saying nothing. So I'm going to go about another hour and a half. And so, and so what I see, what I see is Moses climbing this mountain. Oh, yes, he's thinking about it. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, those of us who are here today, we would not stand for this. Oh, no, you have brought these people all this way. You put in all the blood, sweat, and tears. You went through all of the hell. You went through all of the sacrifice for somebody else to get the credit. What? You ain't going to allow me to put taking the fruits of my labor you're not going to allow me to have my name on the mountain you ain't going to allow me to put my name on the door you ain't going to allow me to have my name on the certificate you ain't going to allow me to do that now can I tell you where you should get glory can I tell you where if anybody interested come on just touch your neighbor say wake up Negro see if anybody here see you got to understand where God gets glory God doesn't get glory where, where we're worried or when we're worried about who gets the credit God gets the glory when we all can come together in agreement and say listen it doesn't matter who gets the credit as long as God gets the glory I ain't got no help in this house I ain't got nobody in here can you just touch somebody that ain't a hater around you and say we want God to get the glory it ain't about me no. it ain't about my resources but it's because see the they understood it. The old folks used to always give thanks to God. I mean, every time you would say something to them, well, mother, how you doing? Well, you know, I thank the Lord. Yeah, okay. Mother, you got any money? Well, I thank the Lord. Well, mother, can I go to the store? Well, I thank the Lord. Mother, that coat, that shirt, that suit look nice. Well, I thank the Lord. If everything about the Lord, yeah. And see, that's where we got to get to. 
sua Porque vai você ver homens De face to God Because it is he that gives us the ability It is he that blesses us It is he that keeps on making us Sleepy. He goes to the top of Mount Pisgah. He goes, this is about to bless me. Pull up verse 7, this is about to bless me. He goes to the top of Mount Pisgah, 120 years old. Mm -hmm. 120 years old. I gotta fill up because I'm about to take off. And 20 years old, he had brought the people out of Israel. He had brought them across the Red Sea. Everybody seen the Ten Commandments? Yeah. Y'all seen the Ten Commandments? You ain't never seen the Ten Commandments? See the second, see the second person I met in my life that ain't seen the Ten Commandments. We gonna buy her that movie because we need her to see that. You ain't saved unless you seen the Ten Commandments. The Red Sea opened up the sea. Yeah. Went through all of the hell, all that yakking in the. I mean, come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on, Sister so, so Marla, come on. Yeah. Come on, can, can you just imagine? Come on, can y'all just imagine this? Yeah. It's hot as hell in the devil. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. And people just yakking in your ear. me when it's hot. You know, cold sticking to your hip. Don't, don't even touch me when it's hot. And they steady complaining. He's done everything, sister, that he could do. Every time they complain, brother, God showed up and blessed them. But they still complain. And here and now, he's about to die. Know you're about to die goes up on the mountain at 120 years old to see vision. Got up on the mountain of vision in an old age. Oh God. <laughs> in an old age, he got up on the mountain of vision. Look at somebody say, neighbor. In an old age, he got up on the mountain of vision. Can I tell you on my way home tonight that you ain't going to die nah, until God allows you to see it happen. Oh, y'all just missed a word for you. <laughs> you just missed a word. You just missed something right there. Somebody should have got happy. I said, God ain't going to let you die until you leave. You're going to leave to see it happen. <laughs> yes, I don't, I don't know what your vision is. I don't know. I don't know what your vision is for your child, for your house, for your own life. But God told me to tell you <laughs> that you shall not die. <laughs> Until it all come to pass. I don't hear nobody in here. You ought to give your neighbor a high five and say, neighbor, we're going to see it happen. Yes. Come on, look at another neighbor and say, neighbor, we're going to see it happen. We are not going to die, but you shall. See it happen. That's what Moses did. Moses, he climbed up on the mountain a little higher at his old age, 120 years old. And what I like about it, the Bible let us know that everything that he went through, it did not kill him. It did not make him hunched over. It did not make him look his age. It did not slay him out. It did not mess him up. What you mean, Reverend? Because the world says, it said that he was old. When he died, 
Nature is eyes were not weaker, nor his strength go. Do I have a witness in here? Can I tell somebody on my way home that God is going to let you do it? And the weight is on you now because you're headed up a mountain. He's going to drop the weight off and he's going to allow you to when you get to the top of it, you won't even look like the hell you've been through. You won't even look like the hell you come through. You won't even look like the weight that's held you down. Who am I talking to? Is there anybody in here who's been carrying weight for all year long? Is there anybody in here who's been carrying stuff on your back all year long? I come to tell you tonight that you're about to be the limit. God said, look over. Look at what I'm giving you. He said, look at your better place. Look at your valley. Look at your place. And what I like about it, the valley that the mountain was on was called better. I ain't got no weapon here. Ain't it amazing that when God lifts you up and allow you to see better, I ain't got no Nobody, huh? Is there anybody in the building huh, that's glad about it? Huh, that you're up on your mountain. Huh, you're up on your stuff. Huh. I know it ain't all looking good. Huh. I know it ain't all feeling good. Huh. You ain't got all the good. Huh, but you can look over huh, and you can say, huh, better huh, because of huh, where you are. Huh, it's up on the mountain. Huh, it's up on the mountain of stuff. Huh, where you are. Huh, it's up on the mountain. We're huh? up on the mountain. Huh? We're on the mountain of trouble. Huh? We're up on the mountain huh? of tear stained eyes. Huh? We're up on the mountain huh? of not having enough. Huh? We're up on the mountain huh? of I'm sick and tired of it. Huh? We're up on the mountain huh? of help. Huh? We're up on the mountain huh? of somebody get me off. Huh? We're up on the mountain huh? of where my help at. Huh? We're up on the mountain huh, of where my stuff at. Huh. We're up on the mountain huh, of when it's going to be my turn. Huh. We're up on the mountain huh, of when he's going to find me. Huh. We're up on the mountain huh, of when I'm going to get married. Huh. We're up on the mountain huh, of when it's all the hurt going to stop. Huh. But God, huh, while you're up on the mountain, huh, God allows you huh, to look over huh, into your valley. Huh. And I come to tell you, huh, I I'm to tell you that you got to look out there and you got to see better. I know where I am, but I can see where I'm going. I can see beyond the valley. Because the older after the valley, there's another mountain. I got another mountain to climb. Up on the mountain, I got to climb another mountain. Is there anybody here who got to understand that you go from mountain top? The valley low, but you got to understand that every time we come out of the mountain, every time we come through the valley, we got to cross another mountain. Is there anybody in the building that say I'm ready to climb my mountain? I can climb a mountain because the God I serve from the mountain climber, the God. I'm the mountain climber. Is there anybody here? Have you ever had mountains that you could not climb? Have you ever had valleys that you could not cross? Well, I come to recommend the God I serve. He'll be like a shelter. He'll help you fight your battles. He'll help you climb your mountain. He'll help you go through your valleys. When it's your neighbor, that's a Neighbor, better, better. I dare you to trust me, people. That say better. I'm up on the mountain, but I've got to come down. I'm better. Say better. Say better. I see better. I feel better. I look better. I spin better. I feel better. Somebody, put your arm around somebody and 
say we are holy Lord. Yeah. We are awesome. We are here. I can say better. I dare you to open your mouth and say I can say better. Y'all ain't saying it for me. I can say better. Say I can say better. Oh my mountain. I dare you. That's up on the mountain. You got through some trouble. You got through some hell. You got through some difficulty. But God. Say he's gonna do 
sing he gon' do it. Yes. Uh, it ain't predicated on where I'm at now. Uh, but I can sing uh, beyond where I am. Uh, he's on a dish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I got one with me, daughter. 
God is going to do it. I see it for your life. I see it for your life. God is going to do it. Bless you. Bless you. He's going to do it. Bless you. And when you get back to your seat, give him more of Give him more of Give him more Give him love, give him love, yeah! you climbing that mountain. When you ran, you climbed up the mountain. And every time you ran, you got stronger. Running is not to weaken you. God said, Reverend, I felt that in your spirit. It's to make you stronger. Ha. It's to make you stronger. Thank you, Holy Ghost. It's to make you strong. Some of us out here feel real strong. But the devil is in our track. Most folks can say, the difference in running for Jesus and running from the enemy that the Lord never told us to run from the devil. He says, resist him. Stand there. Resist him. And he'll run from you. See, the only way you can resist, it's hard to resist turning your back toward him. Running from him. Hard to resist. You don't even have the strongest muscles. He's trying to use them in a forward position going backwards is not going to work. You got to turn around. Use the biggest muscles you have to resist. Because he gets saved. You know how a bully is. As long as you run him, he's a bully. I ain't got no help. Man, what do you do with that? Tell me what I just did. Man. I said, I said, I said, when you were reached off a run from me, uh -huh. like, our strongest muscles, we're not able to use them if we got our back to it. But when you face it, you got the biggest muscles that you can resist. I understand that. I got you. You resist. But this is where I, this is where I got a good piece right here. It's a part of life right here. Okay. I said, you know how it is with a building? He's a bully as long as he's beating me up. Yeah. I got it. You got it. You already know where I'm going, don't you? You already know where I'm going. But once you turn around and stop running, and put the bangs on him. You, 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 you know, you turn the other cheek already. That's that's what we are. Okay, we are super dancers. You gotta stop. You ain't got the two cheeks to change. You turn the other cheek. Well, that's what I tell you. Well, after you turn it. Cheese. That's what the Bible says. Turn the other cheek, right? You only got four. That's the Bible. After you 
church to come to, don't come here. And in fact, if you find one, let me know because I'm coming to join you too. But no church is my perfect, no pastor is perfect, we're people. 
we have imperfect tendencies, we have the same, we have the same proclivities as each other. But the difference of us being here and those who don't come is because we know we need God in our lives. We know that we can't do it without God's help. So that's why we come. We don't come here because we're comfortable, because we're better. But we come because we know we need God. So if I'm talking to you, you've never been saved, you don't have a church home, I'm talking about where the pastor knows you. Amen. So you know him. I want you to come down. I want you to come down and unite with us, be a part of our church family. Help us grow. We want to help you grow. We want to help you be better. Because where you are is not where God wants you to be. And don't you be satisfied with being where you are. God has so much more. But it begins with you giving your life to him or back to him. So I want to ask you now, my brother, my sister, man, woman, boy, or girl, you know there needs to be a change. And it has to start with your spirit, man. And so I challenge you to step out of your seat right now. Come down and give me your hand. Give God your heart. It's not a perfect place. It's not a perfect time made of perfect people. But we hear the love we love God. And we know without God, we will be jacked up even more. I ain't got no more in here. So if I'm talking to you, my brother, my sister, come down. Give me your hand. Give God your heart. God wants you. God wants your heart. God wants your life. He wants your life to be used as a vessel to help other people, man. He wants us to help other people. He didn't give it to us and keep it for ourselves. He wants us to use our lives to help other people. But if I'm talking to you, I want you to step out of your aisle, step out of your seat, step out into the aisle. Come down, come give me your hand, give God your heart. Come give me your hand, give God your heart. It will help me, those people that are around us that are not people of our church, ask them if they're saved, if they have a church home, we're not trying to make you join, we just want to help you do what God wants you to do. Amen. We want you to, we just want to help you. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. We have a saved house. Everybody's covered. Let's give God a hand of praise. All right, it's giving time. Amen, it is giving time. Amen, and I want you all to be faithful. Be faithful. Look at your neighbor, say, be faithful. Say, it's tax time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I want you to be faithful in your giving. Don't forget, don't forget on this Wednesday, we will not have Bible study Wednesday, we will have it on Tuesday at 12. We'll not have Bible study on Wednesday and uh, 1 o'clock, I'm sorry, 1 o'clock, Tuesday at 1 o'clock, our normal Bible study day at 1 o'clock on Tuesday, amen. So uh, on Wednesday, we're going to head over to Pastor Burke's Church, Higher Heights, the address is out. Um, on our bulletin board as you walk into the front door. Um, so meet us over there at 7 o'clock, 7.30. See, them Kojic people like to have church late. Apostolic, yeah. They like to have church late, 7.30. So 7.30, y'all. All right? So let's be there, please, y'all. Y'all, y'all ain't saying nothing. Ain't nobody looking at me, smiling. Or y'all gonna be there? Will y'all please be there? I'm gonna be there. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. I, that's that's my girl. That's my little warrior right there. Um, Jackie. Jackie is learning. She's joining our church and she is coming to our back to basics class and she is just really excited and I'm excited for her. Amen. I'm excited for her. She one of them kind now. Don't play. Don't 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 take that smile as a weakness now. Yeah. She get with you. Amen. Now, she, she's so sweet. She's so sweet. I had talked to her sister Lane about being an usher. She said, yeah, I would love to be one. You see, sister, that's sister Lane right there. Holler at her, okay? Yeah, yeah. I would love for her to do that. All right. Y'all ready to give? Don't forget on the fifth Sunday, I want everybody to look at somebody and say, that's you, that's you, that's you, that's you. Y'all ain't saying nothing. That's you. I need you all to bring some people to church. Amen. I want this church full on the fifth Sunday. All right, I want it full on the fifth Sunday. Where did Tay go? She gone? Where is she? Tay, Tay, that's my girl right here, y'all. See, some of y'all, some of y'all new members, y'all know her. This is uh, this is Erica's daughter. This is Mr. Erica's daughter right here. 
Spell up, girl. It's this Tay Tay. She lives, she's been going to school in Texas, amen, and she's 16 years old now. No? You're 16, huh? Don't be acting all fun. <laughs> she done got down to Texas and got a little country accent, man. She got a little Texas accent. And she here for a couple weeks, and um, this is a church girl right here, y'all. When she come home, she sing on the praise team, and she get right back in it. Amen. So you're going to see her up here in a little bit. What's that song you sang? What's that song, Erica, that I like? Uh, <laughs> she said she was little when she sang that one. But that was my favorite because she used to do these arm movements and stuff. Yeah, the favorite of the Lord is here. The feeling of the Lord is here, and the feeling in the lake is here. The feeling of the Lord is here. So anyway, she is just so pretty. Look at her, y'all. She's just grown up looking so pretty. Oh my God! Good to see you, babe. Good to see your daughter. Amen. Then we got Uncle Mead in the building. Don't don't. That's, that's Uncle Newt right there, y'all. He, he done jumped on the praise team and all that. Look at him. Good, good, good. Y'all ready to give? All right, all right. We're ready to give. Amen. We are in the hands of our junior ushers. Listen, parents, parents, will y'all do me a favor? Parent, I need some more junior ushers. I do. I just got, what, three, three now? I need some more junior ushers. If your children can walk, and like they can hold a conversation and kind of give some direction, give a little direction. We have a supervisor that's with them, but I need somebody that's able to give some, you know, kind of talk and stuff like that. I need y'all to please, Brother Davis, Brother Davis is just going to get the phone number um, from you. See, Sister Lane, I'm sorry, Sister Lane. Oh, Rob, that's right, Brother Rob. Yeah, Brother Rob, where you at, Rob? Brother Rob is over our junior ocean. And so, parents, listen, I need you all. I need you all. They only usher what? Fourth, third Sunday? Third and fifth Sunday. Huh? Third and fifth Sunday. So they only usher third and fifth Sunday, and all they need is a white shirt and some black pants or a black skirt, okay? And if you need help with that, let me know, because I, I need some more junior ushers, all right? All right? All right. That's what's up. All right. Come on. We're the hands of our junior ushers. Let's go. Nicole is like a, I mean, Nicolette is like a senior junior usher. That, that's the senior junior usher. <laughs> yeah, she's a senior junior usher. How come you ain't on the usher board? How come you ain't on the usher ministry? Oh, my streaming people, y'all watching us stream and listen, we want you all to partake in this giving. We want to bless you. We know that our service has been a blessing to you. So all you got to do is go on our website and hit that red giving tab, amen, donation tab. It is totally secure. It's totally legit. And please bless the service, God. We've been blessing you. So please do that for us. We thank you. We love you. We'll see you next week. All right? Amen. Thank <laughs> you.